Hi to everyone, I am Fidel Master Dadar Vahidov. I've been playing chess for about 12 years and working as a coach for about 3 years. So this course is designed for people who are right now having struggle how to play against e4 opening. And this course is would be all about c6, but I would say instead of c6 you can also play e5 and c5 the Sicilian opening, which could be also the good openings for black. And this course would be about c6, and I would say nowadays c6 move is becoming one of the trending moves for black. And even Magnus Carlsen uh, plays this uh, Karakon defense with the black perspective. And I would say the Karakon defense would be one of the good openings for black in the endgame stuff because of his pawn structure. And as we know, once you play c6, here the main line stands for d4, and black would play d5, playing for the center. Once you play d5, here white can have a bunch of options that he could play. It would be playing in this position knight c3, which we call this one the classical variation, and after the text e4, knight e4 will happen. And also besides that, there is an advanced variation playing e5, where white tries uh, to close up the position. And after this moment, I would say black's the light square bishop, one of the, his active and the best piece in this position. And as well as that the light squares is a little bit uh, weakness would be for white, where black can put much more pressure to that light squares. And also, in the modern chess world, f3 is becoming right now one of the popular moves that in a professional chess happening, even in 2021, and the thought is still that uh, Maxim Wachrelagraf played against a uh, German grandmaster Don Donchenko, the f3 move. And, but I would say in that game the Donchenko did a really good job and because of some things like uh, in the middle game stuff he blundered, actually he had the winning position and he lost the game. But I would say after f3 the Donchenko got a very good position. And lastly there's an exchange variation that white can go. And after e takes d5, c takes d5, here our opponent can play bishop d3 move where not letting the black's bishop to come to f5. And another the move that uh, white can choose would be playing c4, uh, kind of black would, uh, white would play with the isolate pawn, and this one we call the pan of variation. This would be all of the possibilities of white in the main line once you push d5. And actually we know that the main lines that happens a lot, but as well as side lines should be described. After once you play c6, uh, we can also face uh, more often knight c6 move and d5 and knight f3 where white tries to put uh, the two knights variation and also in the second move there is a possibility that your opponent can play d3 and also we will uh, look up how we should play if white tries to put like a simple structure and we will see how the black should put what kind of structure if white plays this kind of simple move and lastly here white can play c4 and if you pay attention, it kind of looks like similar to our main line, where in the exchange line, after takes takes, there is a move c4. And this one uh, we call the panoff. And in the second move, if you place also c4, uh, it looks like the panoff variation. And this one we call pseudo panoff. This would be all we will see in our curve in the Karakon defense. And I would say once you will finish that, so we will discuss everything in the details after finish that, finishing that, I would say you will not have that problem. And for your convenience, there would be the pigeon for the only the main lines, that once you will finish that, you can go and review some opening main lines in order to remember better. That would be all that we will discuss in the Karakan Defense course. I hope you will enjoy from the course and I will see you then inside the course. Hi there, in this video we are going to discuss with you how you should play in the Karakon defense of main line, the classical variation once the knight goes to c3. After knight goes to c3, pawn captures on e4, knight e4 and bishop f5. Here we are giving three options for white to put his knight. So the, the knight could go to c5, the knight go to, to c3 and the main line would be going to g3 in this position with the knight. Uh, I would say in this position playing knight c5 and knight c3 stands for sidelines, 
let's check out first how we should play if the knight goes to c5 and now i would say it's one of the interesting of sims putting the knight somehow in the queen side knight c5 could be faced by b6 knight b3 e6 and as we can see right now we have very active the bishop on f5 the light squared knight f3 bishop d6 trying to develop and making another active piece the dark square bishop and g3 knight e7 here we can play knight f6 but i would recommend you to play i would recommend you to put this kind of the two knights on d7 e7 because once you go knight f6 it's also not bad move but it could be faced by the move of bishop g5 the bishop can can, g, can come to g5 the idea behind knight d7 move would be we also can go like knight g6 move that's also another the possibility we can do after knight e7 bishop g2 and here black will do the prophylax stuff so we understand if we go to knight f6 it could be faced by uh, by the move bishop g5 for the reason let's just move the one move prophylaxis stopping the idea of white to come to bishop g5 castles castles c4 and knight d7 here as we can see all of the pieces of black developed in this position and here we want to go like knight f3 and getting the square of e4 with our knight queen e2 and after all, I would say on the Karakhan defense, uh, most of the time uh, you will put the pressure on the queen side of your opponent. And for that reason, at this moment, it's time to do something on the queen side. And black starts very actively and aggressively pushing a5. And the idea behind this move would be you want to play a4, kicking out the knight from b3, as well as starting to put the pressure on the queen side. So here, white will play a4 stopping our idea of playing pushing a4 but what if he not plays let's say he goes knight e5 in this position it could be faced by the move a4 knight d7 queen d7 knight d2 and a3 black started to put very strong pressure on the queen set of his opponent for the reason here white tries to stop the black's idea by pushing a4 queen c7 bishop e3 and after a4 as you can see here white created the ideal square for the black that stands for the b4 square because right now if you put any kind of the minor piece of black on b4 it couldn't be kicked out the by the knight uh, by the pawn sorry so bishop b4 bishop f4 queen b7 rook fd1 rook fd8 rook ac1 and rook ac8 but then the next idea that black can do would be in this position playing queen a6 and pushing c5 i would say this the most important thing that whenever you play the opening instead of remembering move by move try to remember the structures so right now we are understanding what kind of structure we are putting after knight goes c5 so the structure would be after knight c5 so putting this kind of e6 and putting bishop d6 structure not fianchetting at all knight d7 so the structure would be if uh, in a classical variation knight goes to c5 putting the structure of e6 knight, knight e7 bishop d6 knight d7 most of the time i would say in the Karakhan defense you will put that kind of structure fianchetting i would say would be no not i think the percentage is so so less we will not play g6 on the Karakhan defense. Most of the time, the black, the dark squared bishop would be developed uh, by playing e6. So this would be how we should play against knight c5. Now let's take a look if what the knight goes back to its square. So it starts from knight c3, he took on e4, and again going back to knight c3. We will make again simple development. e6, putting that kind of structure, knight f3, and now knight f6 bishop d3 and here white try uh, offers to trade the bishops definitely we should take because otherwise if we make any kind of the move with our bishop or with the knight uh, what we will have would be a little bit the position weakness we will have the double pawns on f5 for the reason when white tries to uh, offers to trade of the light square bishop we should trade it and actively developing the bishop to d6 castles and here the key move that you should do before casting so here the white idea white's idea would be he tries to put his knight to e5 
and so we are realizing that for the reason we are doing preventing the knight from coming to e5 knight bd7 rook e1 again what he the game is right now going in the center to e5 square white again tries uh, to put the pressure on e5 and helping to go to knight e5 but right now again queen c7 what we are doing we are preventing the knight come to e5 and once after that so here as well as we are uh, putting the pressure on h2 white will play h3 right now just we will play simple casting so knight cannot go to e5 and after that what you can do would be first play please play a6 so this idea would help with uh, helps us to push c5 because if you push here immediately like a c5 move we could face the move of knight d5 where he will attack our queen and the bishop for the reason first we should do like a prophylaxis of a6 and uh, even then you can centralize your two rooks to d8 and c8 after that once you are ready you can just simply push c5 in that position so in this video we discuss with you the sidelines that could happen in the classical variation once you play f5 knight c5 and knight c3 and in the next video we will discuss with you the main line how we should play if the knight goes to g3 i hope you enjoyed from this video and i'll see you then in the main line of the classical variation where the knight goes to knight g3 thank you all after bishop f5 so knight g3 bishop goes to g6 and after that black can expect the uh, black can expect three moves of white that white can do knight can go simply go to f3 knight can go to h3 with the next idea of putting f4 that's right now is become one of the main line popular move playing knight h3 in this position and lastly black can white can try to put uh, h four in this position trying to play uh trying to putting the pressure to the light squared bishop on g6 let's gonna start with you to seeing this h4 move how you should um, play against it so h4 we are understanding that he tries to put the pressure for our light squared uh, bishop for the reason just he will play h6 and after h6 knight f3 and after knight f3 knight d7 uh, i would say starting with the right order would be correct because if you start with any kind of order e6 or knight f6 in this position it could be uh, met by the move knight e5 in this position where uh, white will centralize his knight at the same time putting the pressure to our g6 bishop for the reason what i would recommend you would be knight d2 where knight e5 doesn't make any sense in this position where just we are capturing the knight takes takes and at the same time black is getting very ahead in the development and white is losing the king safety in this position most of the time the car can defense that white tries to trade off the bishops and when he offers just trade it take takes and again e6 the structure that we will put a lot in the car defense castles knight gf6 bishop f4 and bishop as e7 where i would say it's a equal position for both of the sides what would be the next idea of black just castling uh, so we have the ideal square the d5 that we can put the knight what i would recommend you would be after casting queen can go to b6 rook c8 with an idea again pushing c5 most of the time i would say in the car can defense once you will develop all of your bishop once you make a good development uh, it would be the time to crush the center by playing c5 with that kind of move and if after h6 if you will face this kind of h5 move it's totally fine that you will play bishop h7 and after bishop h7 again knight f3 knight goes to f6 again if tries to uh, trade we already discussed line that we are simply taking taking but if he goes to bishop e2 no trading off it's totally fine knight bd7 castles e4 bishop f4 and then after bishop f4 bishop e7 and after that what our opponent can do for example c4 could be possibility not letting the knight to come on d5 black castles queen d2 and uh, trying to make some threat on h6 but actually that doesn't work at all so here again we can go to rook t8 with an idea pushing c5 or immediately here in this position we can push c5 or instead of that um 
here what we can do would be playing like a5 trying to crush off his uh, queen set if a4 kind of we saw already this kind of position where if you remember there would be what the idle square for black the b4 square since there is no pawn that can kick out our uh the piece from there i would say then just you should put the bishop from b4 with the next idea pushing c5 and black is just fine in this position h4 i would say you can face but not uh, always because that h4 move i would say very aggressive and most of the time this kind of move could be played by tactical chess players what we can face a lot in this kind of position just putting simply the knight on f3 the normal development knight d7 bishop d3 e6 here we can trade the bishops or let's see what if just we will let white to take that castles knight gf6 the usual development rook e1 and bishop e7 but the next idea we want to castle after bishop e7 right now we all already understand how we should play um if we capture on d3 but what if it captures on g6 you can say okay here we kind of created double pawns but actually it is totally fine that double pawns where we open h file uh, where we open in this position the h file for rook but definitely will cancel the short casting casting and bishop f4 where why i'm saying this uh, not bad at this moment because here if the pawn was on a seven kind of zero was a attack on a g5 square but this is your g6 pawn and g7 stopping the completely the complete idea of white just this uh, the two double pawns on the king side of black stopping the threat to the king side of a black and again after bishop f4 just you're playing c5 crushing the center immediately or just again you can go to queen b6 rook a8 rook f8 prepare the pieces and then you can crunch the center by playing c5 and again i would say in this position um, i would prefer to play with the black we can say black is slightly better and lastly after bishop g6 here the main line where right now it is it is very popular knight h3 knight f4 knight f6 where we are seeing for what knight is coming for coming uh, to put the pressure to the light square bishop that would be the main idea behind this kind of the maneuvering stuff from g8 to f4 and after that uh, we will just play knight bd7 and here by understanding your opening whether your opponent the tactical chess player or the positional chess player he can choose two moves in this position he can play aggressively h4 the trying to put the pressure to a light square bishop or just again playing simple bishop goes to c4 if bishop c4 queen c7 castles e6 c3 bishop d6 trying to put the pressure to this knight castles and boom again what crushing with the move c5 d c5 bishop c5 bishop e3 um here the we reach the position where it's time to decide where to castle short casting or long casting um we here we can simply long uh, short castle and get the normal position but what i would recommend you come on let's try to play aggressively long casting where kind of our pieces uh much more right now actively can start the attack on the king side of white knight takes g6 h takes g6 where the white did his goal capturing our g6 bishop bishop f4 will meet by the move e5 bishop e3 and e4 right now what we are doing we are kind of looks like we are sacrificing the pawn but actually it's not because after knight e4 taking a stance for a blunder just queen h3 check because the rook is protecting the queen at this moment for the reason after e4 your opponent has two uh, or even three combinations with the queen so queen e2 queen d1 makes much more sense because after queen f4 simply this move could be faced by the move just uh, bishop d6 and kinda the queen would be in a trap situation after queen g5 it could be made knight d5 and the white queen could be trapped very soon it's very uh, in an unpleasant square I would say here queen e2 seems very logical and here I would just recommend you to stop to pause the video 
and try to check your calculation. Here, black have very good tactical sacrifice and let's see, can you find it? If you find that, that would really go. Cool. And I guess uh, you kind of come up with any, uh, some tactical sacrifice in this position. So that sacrifice would be sacking at the rook for the pawn. Rook takes h2 and it looks like very weirdly, right? Like Jack sacrifices a rook for a pawn. But now we will see what could happen. And after king h2, bishop e3 is a key move. Because why? Um, if queen e3, it could face simple by a fork. We are checking the king and at the same time attacking the queen. So if f takes e3, that could be faced by the move rook h8 check, king g1 and queen g4 with the next uh, queen g3, sorry, with the next idea knight g4 and queen h2 checkmate, unstoppable checkmate is coming. So queen f2 doesn't make any sense, again checkmate stuff is coming. And if rook comes right here, we'll just remove uh, control to the squares and again, that uh, checkmate stuff is coming, h2 and h1 stuff. And as we can see how rook h2 is so powerful. But the question will happen. What if he not takes, right? We discussed the one of the weakest option of our opponent, capturing on e3. But what if he plays just simple, king g1, taking his king from the pin and from h5. Bishop just go to c5 and what we are preparing? Queen g3, because the bishop is pinning the king. So after that, knight e4, rook e8. Again, the pinning stuff. F3 is a not possibility because the bishop is pinning the king. Bishop a4, the rook e4, bishop d7, queen d7, queen f3, and queen d6. With the right knight d5, knight f4, knight e2. Is this kind of maneuvering? Just black can play. Or black just black can play uh, simple, and I would say very easy win at this point. And as we know that in chess, knight and bishop always better than the rooks. Even let's say your open have the rook and two pawns and you have the knight, bishop, knight and bishop, still know that your position is better because the together knight and bishop can do very good stuff. So after e4, we are seeing that queen e2 could be faced with a rook h2. What about queen d1? I would say queen d1 even much more worse because rook h2, king h2, bishop e3, just simple. And king g1 here again, it could be faced by the move just uh, bishop c5, the same idea. If let's say here, uh, if knight uh, tries to go come to like knight e2, knight g4, putting the pressure to h2 square, g3 and knight, d5, knight d5 and check just Simply we are crushing the white king after knight f3 check and rook h8, white chess winning. But what if it takes in this position? So knight g4 check doesn't make any sense because simple we are losing the knight. But what uh, the strong would be stands for in this position? Rook h8 check, removing the defender of g3, the king, and then just capture on queen g3. With the next move knight g4 and again the situation that we discussed already, the unavoidable checkmate white is having and black is just winning in this position. And as we can see at this moment after knight f4 and knight b d7, if white tries to play positionally, kind of black is choosing the tactical chess much more aggressively even we try to castle long. But what if, what if, white plays h, h4 like aggressively immediately, right? And as we can see what he's doing, putting a very, very lot of pressure with uh, his pieces. First of all, the knight come, uh, came to f4. Okay, that was the first pressure. But now we are facing the second pressure, h4, putting the second pressure to uh, the last square bishop. And kind of here, we should worry about our bishop. How can we save that? Because this kind of pushing h pawn right now doesn't help at all, because we will get like a very bad pawn structure, like a pawn island on the king side, and definitely already. White is just winning, even he has the two pair of bishops. White is just better in this position. What would be the best move in this position? Pushing e5 immediately. And kind of this move during the game, fighting is not so easy uh, because e5 seems a little bit like a humanity mind will not come with this idea. Because the idea behind e5 would be what? D takes e5, right? If we take knight e5, eventually the bishop would be trapped. Like by playing h5, then after bishop e4, there's f3 move. 
but what would be the best one in this position would be queen h5 check. That kind of very beautiful idea black is using in this position. c3, queen e5 check, queen e2, and we are just playing bishop c5. And you can say, what? We are just uh, giving the light square bishop? Because there is a move h5, right? Yes, there is a move h5, but here we have just move bishop c2. It's pinned that he cannot take our bishop. So in this position, if black uh, white tries to say, play simply, black is just excellent in this position. But here white has a continuation that he can try to win our bishop. Bishop e3, bishop e3 takes, f takes e3, and here white will go, uh, white, uh, black will go in a much more aggressive chess, sacrificing just the bishop. And now we will see, does the sacrifice worse or not? Queen takes e2, faced by queen e3 check. So we are attacking both of the knights. They should defend each other by playing knight f e2. And now it's time to put uh, another pressure with our knight. Knight e5. So here we are following the rule. If you add the more pieces to your attack, your attack would be much more stronger and effective. So knight e5, the idea behind this move is right now knight uh, d3 check is coming. That is our main idea. If white to stops that by playing rook d1, rook d1, king d1, and again rook d8 check. So if king e1, knight, just knight d3 check is coming, black is just winning after that. Even though it's knight b4 check, we are winning the queen. If he tries to play knight d4, simply queen g3 and black is just winning first of all all our pits are working we are the pawn up white king is just in a bad position and right now this kind of simple like a uh, two square weakness would be very good for black knight just come to g4 knight f2 four cast is coming knight e3 check is coming even though it, uh, white uh, should try to stop the c5 of in this position black is just winning in this position and as we can see h5 move we have the bishop c2 move but there is also another continuation that our opponent can do what if just he captures on g6 if the captures on g6 h takes g6 bishop f4 uh, trading off the queens queen a to check bishop e2 and after that long castling rook d1 and after rook d1 here the position we reached that Still, we are playing with the black, but what we have kind of the good development in this moment. After rook d1, if you play here at this moment, we should understand. Should we play to e8 with the h rook or with the d rook? What do you think? We should we play with the d rook or h rook? Let's just again pause the video and try to think what could be the difference between two moves. And I guess you found the difference. So the difference would be between rook d8 and rook h8, because if you play rook e h8, here kind of we are, first of all, removing the pressure that we're putting on h file and letting the white to castle. That's a difference, but if you play rook d8, what we are doing? Still there is some pressure on h file and white cannot castle because of what? Just the pawn is hanging. That would be the difference between two moves and rook d8 makes much more sense. King f1. Uh, black white tries to put his king uh, from out of the pin knight e5 trying to add uh, the knight's uh, game and as well as the next idea would be knight g4 putting the pressure to f to pawn rook h3 knight f g4 bishop g4 knight g4 so we are stretching right now at the fork on f2 rook d2 rook e7 uh, b3 and rook h8 Black is just excellent in this position, and as I told you before in the introduction section, that uh, the car system would be so good for uh, endgame stuff. And right now, as you can see, every piece of black just working. The two rooks that in the ideal square, the knight on g4 in the ideal square, and the bishop c5. We're putting a lot of pressure, and I would say definitely it's easier uh, to play for black in this position, because so we have a ton of ideas that we can do. That would be all of my recommendation that how you should play if your opponent will go with you after e4, c6, d4, d5. It's a classical variation, knight c3. And I, I guess I described everything in details that uh, usually in the logical chess that could happen, this kind of moves. And I hope whenever now you will face this kind of classical variation, 
you have already the good opening reporter and you will get the better and the good positions in the middle game. To meet you all in our new video, we will talk about one of the modern moves right now White is playing in the third move, playing F3, which is a fantasy variation. I would say this, become, uh, this move become quite popular back to like for three years already, people start to play. I would say most of the like, professionals playing this F3 move, because kind of you need experience in order to make this kind of move in the third move. So it would be E4, C6, D4, D5, as we know that uh, two moves of the car can defense, and in the third move, uh, white can choose whatever he wants and plays f3. Once white plays f3, it kind of, if he captures on d4, on e4, white will also capture, and it looks like right now black, white is controlling the center. However, here uh, black has very good move, and that would be breaking up the center by his move playing immediately e5. And once you play in this position e5, um, here knight should go to f3, otherwise, if it takes our pawn on d takes e5, first of all, as we can see, white is losing the safety of the king, and the just knight goes uh, to d7 and attacks uh, the pawn on e5 in this position, and also, this is a really double pawn, so vulnerable, if knight goes after, for example, with the knight c5, we are attacking to the e4 pawn, and if white continues to play, he would be kind of uh, down in a development at the same time, and here we can get very uh, pleasant, um, position as well as our development is much more faster and at the same time white has some problems with his, the safety of the king. And capturing on e5 will give immediately the advantage for black, for the reason knight should go to f3, and which is the idea in this move why knight is playing f3, he wants to capture the e5 pawn with the knight and not having the double pawn once he captures. However, we will here we will play bishop g4 and not letting the knight come to, to capture our e5. And white also at the same time continues making his devel development by playing bishop c4 and knight d7, uh, supporting the pawn on e5, castles, knight gf6. Right now, I would say both of the fights they are making quite normal development. And here, uh, pawn plays c3 because d takes e5 uh, still doesn't make any sense in this position because once after d takes e5, here we have the queen b6 check. And after king h1, just knight captures on e5, which is the bishop is pinning in this position the queen. That knight cannot take our uh, free knight on e5. After c3, uh, black plays bishop d6, and at this moment here white has a bunch of continuations that he can choose. The main, main line in this position would be playing queen b3, which means in this position you can see white is attacking our double pawns, which is on b7 and at the same time on f7. Besides that, here he can go like a bishop e3, normal development of the dark squared bishop, white black castles, knight bd2, b5 immediately, bishop d3, queen 7 That b5 actually is very beneficial of at this position because of why. First of all, we kicked out one of the active uh, pieces of white. At the same time, uh, we are not letting this uh, d2 knight come to c4, which would be ideal square for white. After that, queen goes to e1, bishop h5. Queen h4, bishop g6. Kind of right now, this bishop, the light square bishop, is doing the job of defending the black's king side. Pawn captures on e5, knight captures on e5, capturing happens on e5 square, and after all, knight f3. Uh, right now, white is uh, activating his another knight to f3, knight d7, uh, which is if knight captures on e5, we will also capture, and black has a very pleasant position to play. The knight is just doing uh, crazy thing on, in the center. At the same time, he has an uh, isolate pawn where we can just go rook a e8 and put the pressure on e4 pawn. At the same time, uh, if the bishop goes back, there will be the idle square for the knight that whenever we want, we can go to knight c4 in order to put the pressure to bishop on e3. At the same time, just on e file. For the reason capturing doesn't give anything for white, bishop uh, d4 and just bishop d6. But then the next idea would be uh, black is at this position, I would say, around equal position for both of the sides. And now uh, the continuation of would be for black rook a8 and then not letting the white come to e5. And after all, we can play a6 with an idea at c5, c4. And once we put the pawn on c4, we have uh, the score of c5 where knight can go to c5 
and put the pressure to the isolate pawn of white to e4. Where in this, in this position, I would say black should continue to play for the center at the same time on the queen set of white. That where the fox would be of black if the bishop goes to e3. But at this moment, if bishop goes much more like actively to bishop g5, black castles, knight bd2, h6, just uh, kicking out the bishop, and at the same time, like um, winning the tempo, creating the space for the king. Bishop h4, queen 7 removing the queen from the pin. Uh, white plays h3 to kick out our bishop, but still, we will continue to put the pressure to that diagonal. Queen c2, white also uh, removing his queen from the pin. Bishop g6, right now, again, as you can see, we are putting to where? e4, because uh, that is right now the main weakness of white that we can, that we can put the pressure on. Bishop d3, and in this position, what could be the idea behind this move, bishop d3? First of all, right, he's defending the pawn on e4. At the same time, he wants to activate his knight to the c4. That's, I would say, the main idea behind this move, bishop d3, for the reason. Black way makes immediately the prophylax stuff, b5, not letting the knight come to c4. D takes e5, and bishop should capture on e5. And at this moment, why, uh, you can say knight, not, not knight e5, because otherwise, we will have the kingside problem. First of all, kingside is right now open and we will have this kind of bad pawn structure. And the reason why we are taking with the bishop in order to not ruin the pawn structure at the same time when the knight captures on e5, for sure, we will not take with the knight because the same stuff happens. Just queen captures on e5. And after that, if they have bishop f6, bishop and knight takes f6, knight f3, and just queen c5 check, king h1, and again, rook goes to fe8. And rook goes to a d8, which means centralizing everything. And right now, um, I would say black is just totally fine to play this position because this uh, we understand the isolate pawn. But besides that, kind of the king set of white could be vulnerable because there are also this kind of idea. We have knight can go to g3 or whether knight can go to f4, putting the pressure to the white center. This would be like a two moves of our opponent that he can play whether bishop h3 or bishop g5, which seems, uh, which gives blacks uh, the pleasant position. And right now we will see one of the interesting moves of white, queen b3. I would say this position, uh, queen b3 is um, a little bit not easy to find, but it's possible to play. So queen e3, we all already understand the idea behind this move, double attacking, and uh, whether if we try to defend the b7, we are losing f7, if we try to f7, b7. We should lose one of them, but we should lose the, that pawn, which doesn't make any sense. Because in this position, if we try to defend the b7 pawn, um, just we are losing f7, right? Which b7 kind of not matters all, but f7 matters. For the reason, black just castles, queen b7, e takes d4, c takes d4 right now i would say we are going to very critical position where uh, much more tactics would happen knight goes to b6 bishop goes to b3 and in this position if the bishop went to d3 here just we have uh, bishop f3 and after that rook f3 once if rook captures on f3 in this position just we can go to knight g4 putting the pressure on h um, to pawn and if e5, there's a very cool tactic that we can do, and that would be bishop captures on e5. As I said, like a queen b7 line, we are uh, going to a very critical moment, or a ton of calculations. d takes e5 and queen d4 check. And in this position, if king h1 just knight f2 check, just we are seeing that. If king f1, knight h2 check, black is just winning. For that reason, at this moment, uh, bishop went to b3. Knight e4, queen 6 and again that's the idea. What we should do would be capturing on f3, rook f3, and putting the pressure to this h2 pawn, which means simply the king set of white. Queen goes to h4, so it's a very powerful move, I would say, attacking on h2 at the same time, like a double threat we created just by playing queen h4. g3, queen g4, just attacking to rook, which rook uh, plays an f4, and it looks like just right now we blunder it, but actually it's totally not that, because the bishop is just controlling f4 square. Bishop captures, queen captures on e4, and otherwise, if your bishop captures on f4, it's just a mistake for white, because we have just knight g5, 
and uh, bishop g5, queen g5, so we are simple, the material up and very easy to play for black and it's winning at the same time. If queen e4, so as you can see, it not lets us to take the bishop right, because what? Just queen is uh, pinned. Rook goes to a8, and at this moment, um, he cannot like uh, take queen f4, because otherwise if queen f4 happens uh, in this position, we have just uh, rook e1 check, and after rook e1 check, king g2, king g2 check, queen e2 check, so if queen f2 tries to defend that position, we have just captures, captures, and we are winning the material in this position. Uh, but if in this position, when we give queen e2 check, if king goes to h3, the, here we can really take uh, the bishop on t1, because what? The queen is defending that the bishop. For that reason, we'll put another pressure that clearly weakness. Just rook h1, and uh, there is no way like to defend h2, so the last chance of uh, white would be just pushing g4 pawn. And just here we have the rook f3 move, uh, rook f1 move, sorry, and coming to rook f3, just crushing the white king. And black is totally winning. For the reason, the last chance of uh, white could be in this fashion, like bishop f7 check, hoping that uh, we will take with the rook or whether with the king. But actually, just we have simple and, and strong move at the same time. King just h8. Bishop captures, and last, I would say this move as a like killer move, just bishop e3 check. Because once we give in this position bishop e3 check, and so what he can do? He he should capture, otherwise queen is losing. Let's see what would happen. Queen e3, check, king g2, and just boom. Queen f1, black check made that very beautifully. At the same time, we sacrificed many pieces, but at the end, that kind of beautiful checkmate happened. And as you can see, fantasy variation, it would be much more like a tactical stuff. That as you can see, for the reason after f3, once we capture, we are going to much more like a critical position. So that would be playing immediately e5 and crushing the center. And I would say in the fantasy variation right now, black position is totally fine. After I would say this kind of e5 move. I hope you guys, you understand all of the stuff that uh, I described in this video in the fantasy variation and hope once again you face fantasy variation, just uh, keep in mind, capturing on the center and playing e5, crushing the center. That would be your main idea. Thank you all guys, I hope you enjoyed from this video and I will see you then in my next video. In this video we are going to talk with you one of the sidelines that actually what can play in the Karkon defense, playing two knights variation. I would say this two knights variation kind of similar like a four knights variation if black plays of course e5, like uh, white will put the knight on c3 and f3 as well as black on f6 and c6. Uh, but actually since you are playing against e4, c6 it will be totally different stuff. Once knight goes to f3, bishop goes to g4 and you should keep in mind something that in the Karkon defense you must capture that the knight on f3, queen f3 if your opponent puts the structure of the two knights. Once uh, queen's capture on f6, we put e6 structure, it kind of looks like, like a same slav structure we are putting with the black and once we played e6 in this position White has a bunch of continuations that he could play. So the main line would be playing simple uh, bishop e2 but other than that White can also fianche to his bishop by playing g3 or he can get immediately the center by playing d4 or lastly he could also play just simple d3. Let's go and start discussing with you g3 which is uh, seems very interesting because in the Karkon defense we will not usually see like uh, the fianche the usual white not fianche his bishop. But let's see how should we continue if white plays g3. Knight goes to f6, bishop g2, capturing on e4. Knight e4, knight e4, queen e4, and black plays queen d5. Kinda in this position, we are trying to try to defend, try to uh, trade the queens. Once after that, it would be around equal position, and uh, black can continue simple. Queen e4, bishop e4, and in this position, I would say not like clearly end game stuff. Uh, around we can st say still the middle game, but we traded uh, some like a three or four pieces already. And in this position, the black's next idea would be just we should make a development, the right development uh, to putting the pieces the right squares. Knight goes to d7, 
d4, knight f6. So we understand that the knight should go to f6 in order, to, first of all, to get the control of d5 square. So that d5 is just controlling right now the black. After bishop goes to g2 and um, with just here, white plays long castles. And I also just with long castling, we are winning a little bit of tempo. Like if you went rook d8, okay, we are attacking the d4 pawn. But with just long casting, we are canceling at the same time, again, attacking the d4 pawn. And white plays c3, bishop e7, bishop g5, h6, bishop f6, bishop f6. And I would say this is the around equal position for both of the side. I would say maybe like black is slightly better, but around the equal position in this position. Um, first of all, yeah, everything is just the same. And even we have like an opposite color bishop, and as we know, most of the things kind of would be like a drawish stuff. But it's a really playable position. I would say slowly, slowly, king d7, rook d7, and rook go to rook fd8. That would be the idea. Or rook can also go e8. Slowly, slowly, around like a position only, slightly, slightly, uh, two of the sides should continue this position, I would say. After once we play e6. If white plays immediately d4, controls the center, there will be capturing on e4, and here we are giving two options for our opponent, capturing with the queen on e4, or capturing with the knight. Let's gonna start capturing with the knight, because it seems very interesting, because once after knight e4, what he's doing? Just giving us the free pawn. So after that queen captures on d4, once we capture queen d4, bishop d3, knight d7, Bishop e3. I would say why white give in this position the free pawn in order to get like a much more faster development at the same time some initiative for that pawn. Rook d1, knight e5, queen f4, and queen a5 check. Once we give in this position queen a5 check, uh, so king should go to e2, which uh, very surprising move. Actually, instead of king e2, there's also a possibility that he could play bishop d2. After that, just we are capturing knight d3, c takes d3, and even just we can go to uh, queen d8, or just queen d5, just white castles in this position, knight f6, knight f6, queen f6, queen f6, and g takes f6, with an extra pawn in this position for black. Okay, we can call it double, but we are still extra, just we can present f5. And the next idea of black would be just um, long casting and putting the pressure to isolate pawn, like uh, putting the bishop to e7 or c5, and then just doubling up the rook on d file in order to put strong pressure to this isolate pawn of white to d3. For the reason, once we give in this position queen a5 check, king e2, Knight goes to g6, knight d6 check, bishop d6, queen d6. And in this position, I would say if black's, uh, black makes very uh, fast development, there is nothing white can do. But the thing is to making that fast de faster development. So in this position, rook d8 attacking the queen, b4, queen e5, queen e5, knight e5. And right now, after that, for sure, white will take bishop a7, knight f6. And again, uh, we are around the equal position, like we have two knights and our opponent two bishops. But these two knights, I would say, even much more active than two bishops in this position. So knight on e5 is it's an idle, idle square. If you push f4, we can take the just knight on d3. And then just uh, we can long castle, uh, we can just short castle and put the knight on d5, which the d5 is, I would say, the idle square for the knight. It could be even the idle square for the rook. Just pleasant position to play. Just It's very pleasant to play this position with a black perspective. But once after e4, if d takes capture e4, what if white not gives us this kind of chance? What if captures the queen? If queen captures uh, on e4, we will play knight f6 with the tempo just we are attacking, queen h4, bishop e7, creating some kind of like uh, threats with this bishop, bishop d3, and tries to put the pressure here on h7, knight bd7, castles and castles. And this is a playing position for both of that. For example, how white can continue? Bishop can go to g5, 
where here uh, we shouldn't afraid like a h6 move because right he has this kind of continuation bishop h6 g takes h6 queen h6 rook e8 which means here black has white has only the one thing that he can give us proper tool check otherwise just we will put the bishop on g7 and there is no threat to the king at all even if he would do one move late let's say like a rook a1 we just have the bishop f8 queen g5 check and bishop g7 the white uh, black is totally fine and then just we will put the knight on d5 the goal would be if we just uh, trade off the queens so the, his attack would be much more less effective and easy to play for black for that reason at this moment instead of, go, instead of going rook a1 he should play queen g5 check king h6 and after king h6 and again in this position queen h6 check like there i would say the perpetual check would happen in this position and the draw which stuff but if he not takes on h6 let's say bishop f6 just here also captures knight f6 i would say this position for black is totally fine just uh, then we can go to queen b6 in this position and then rook a d8 putting the pressure on d4 and b to pawn so there would be no like a problem to our king set at all since we are there is no like a dark squared bishop of uh, white that he can put the pressure on and as we can see in the d4 line also black position is totally fine lastly what if plays it's just simple d3 usual development usual structure we as we are putting knight d7 bishop d2 knight g f6 but at this moment white plays really aggressively boom pawn goes to g4 well uh, this uh, idea behind this move g4 is what white wants to start the attack immediately for the reason we play g6 queen g3 so queen g3 is either he wants to push f4 at the same time he can play e5 in this position bishop g7 and bishop g2 instead of bishop g2 if he plays like an e5 move we have just knight g8 or instead of knight g8 here we have very good continuation that we can do d4 e takes f6 d takes c3 f takes g7 c takes d2 check king d2 and just rook g8 and in this position so we will then whenever we want we can just take g7 pawn because that's hanging the pawn on g7 and after all his safety of the king is not so good we can just go queen f6 and just long castle then or even we can develop the queen from the queen side it's up to us where to develop for the reason here white plays bishop g2 makes a normal development queen b6 attacking the queen side long castles long castles e5 right now uh, white is playing knight goes to e8 so right now we are putting double attack to this e5 on bishop g5 it kind of looks like the rook is trapped and we will go to very uh, interesting variation this position bishop captures on e5 bishop d8 so queen d8 queen f3 bishop c3 b takes c3 and knight e6 in this position, I would say, yeah, we lost the material, but for the material, what we got in exchange? First of all, knight and pawn, and at the same time, we created uh, the weakness on the queen side where the king is located. And these two knights, I would say, is so powerful in this position. First of all, uh, we have the clear idea that we can do. Knight goes c5, knight b5, and boom. Our idea would be just putting the pieces uh, like this kind of on fifth rank two knights and the queen and just crushing the white king i would say in this position it's very easy to play for black so the idea is clear what you want to accomplish and defending for white can be a little bit problematic since uh, three pieces are just participating in the attack defending that kind of attack is not so easy this would be my recommendation like a forcing line that we can play in the Korokan defense and and after all just bishop e2 just white can play also this kind of move knight f6 against the usual structure castles and d takes e4 so here we should understand like a general thing in the two knights variation where first of all we should capture the knight on f3 and our next idea would be we should capture on e4 that would be our next idea since it creates us the d5 square 
knight e4, knight e4, queen e4, knight d7. So we understand this kind of maneuvering already, knight d7, knight f6, putting the knight to the right place. d4, knight f6, queen d3, bishop d6, not to e7, much more actively to d6. c4, castles, bishop g5, h6, bishop h4, and boom, crushing with the e5. And after that, rook a d1, and rook goes to e8. In this position, if we do some analysis stuff, around equal, I would say not white better, not black is better. I would say maybe around equal position. So here, how white can continue. He has took a contention, whether it takes d takes e5, which is really good for black, or just pushing d5. Let's gonna discuss with you, first of all, like a d5 move, what if it tries to close, uh, closing up the position. Just we will play e4, putting the pressure on e file of our opponent. So let's say queen goes to b3, c takes d5, c takes d5, and then just queen e7. We're really pleasant position for the black. This, the idea behind this move, it kinda looks like we are defending uh, the b7 pawn. At the same time, we have this kind of cool idea which means uh, creating the threat to h2 checkmate. So the next continuation, how black can do it, like just rook a b8 and then boom, playing queen e5. That would be the idea. But if he plays like uh, capturing on e5, it is totally fine, bishop e5, queen d8, rook a d8. And so if rook d8, rook d8, black is totally fine, like uh, bishop f6, along with the opposite colored bishop stuff. And in this position, uh, I would say black is already winning because he's going to lose the pawns anyways. The double attack is coming. Or he can go also this kind of variation where, yeah, we are the pawn up, but opposite colored bishop. I would say, yeah, it's winning. It's kind of we are pawn up with the black and it's very easy to play for black and white should kind of find like a defending. We know like theoretically that uh, this opposite color bishop is drawish stuff, but making draw is not easy. In general, we know it's a draw, but making draw is not so easy. Anything could happen so, so, since it's end game stuff. So that would be all um, all of my recommendations that how we should play against two knights variation in the Karakhan defense. So we understand that we should capture the knight on f3, and after all, uh, we should capture on e4. We should make some tradings in the center, and after that, the knight on b8 knight, uh, would be transferred like uh, transposed to f6 and defense all of the kingside stuff. And yeah, that would be the structure that how we should put against two knights variation. Thank you all, I hope you enjoyed from this video, and I will see you then in the next video. Thanks. We are going to take a look right now the exchange variation that would happen in the Karakhan defense. So on the move third, not pushing e5, but capturing on d5. So it would be as usual e4 c6, d4 d5, and capturing e takes d5, c takes d5. And at this moment, knight f3 and bishop d3, we can call this move like exchange variation. So the main line would be playing bishop d3. But also there's a move c4, that uh, pan variation that white can play. So this move is described in our next videos. In this video, we will take a look how we should play mainly on bishop d3 as well as knight f3. So let's take a look of first video how we should play against knight f3. After knight f3, knight f6. So in this position, uh, white can play bishop f4 or bishop d3. And what could be the difference between bishop f4 or bishop d3? If white plays bishop d3, it kind of not lets the black to go bishop f5, and that would be the only difference. For the reason, let's take a look uh, first how we should play against bishop d3. Knight will go to c6, castles. So here we should keep in mind before pushing e6, we should kind of give the better development for the bishop to light score bishop. Otherwise, if you play e6, it would be very passive bishop on c8. For the reason, bishop g4, c3, e6, knight bd2, bishop d6. As you can see, black is putting all of the pieces in the right move, in the right places. Rook e1. And here, uh, white will, black will make a very tricky move, that would be playing uh, queen 7 in this position. And why I'm saying this tricky move? 
Because in this position, if white makes this kind of like a simple moves, like even b3 or even a3, simple, I would say. So it's just, just cool, a small tricky trap. Bishop takes h2 check. Because knight cannot take because of what? Just queen is pinned by the bishop on g4. For the reason, queen sound from the long way, we were putting this kind of threat. So for the reason, here knight should play f1, just will castle, and then it could be crushed by the a3 trap. So h3, I would say played, bishop h5, and we will play for the queen side of our opponent. If uh, bishop goes to d3, we can see. Uh, we are putting the structure of knight 6 and developing a squared bishop and then e6. What about bishop f4? I would say bishop f4, bishop d3 will put the same structure and again knight 6, c3, bishop f5. The only main difference would be if bishop d3 we put the bishop on g4 and bishop on f4 we are putting bishop on f5. And knight goes to bd2 and e6. And as you can see the similar structure that we were putting in a previous one. I would say um, in the exchange variation most of the time we'll put that kind of structure and the main thing is not like you shouldn't remember move by move but just you must try to remember the structure what kind of structure you should put so in this position if bishop goes to e2 just bishop d6 bishop d6 queen d6 castles and castles was an um, pleasant position for black rook f8 a5 a4 just playing for the queen side of white so this would be how we should play against knight f3 in this position, knight f6, just we understand we should put the knight on to 6, bishop, whether bishop f5, bishop g4, e6, bishop d6, and just castles. But what about bishop d3? Again, kind of the similar structure we'll put. Knight goes to 6, c3, knight f6, and bishop f4. And if you pay attention, kind of the placement of the bishops will uh, remember us the structure of the London system. Because in the London system, we often face this kind of structure that white usually puts bishop on f4 and bishop on d3. So in this position with the tempo, we'll go to bishop g4. And if knight f3, already we discussed this variation where we will play e6 and bishop d6. That will transpose to our previous line that we already discussed. But here, white can make very interesting move. Queen goes to b3 adding the queen to the game immediately and at this moment in, instead of just defending b7 pawn we have very surprising move for our opponent and as in a very aggressive boom playing e5 yeah at first sight we you, uh, we, uh, we really don't understand why a black played e5 but once we will analyze we can see that e5 is so powerful move in this position so after e5 and i would say d takes e5 is one of the natural move white can do there's also possibility bishop e5 Queen also can capture b7, another possibility, or last the h3. So why h3? Here in this position, we were attacking his bishop, and at the same time, white will attack our bishop on g4. But let's take a look first, what if just captures on d takes e5. After d takes e5, knight goes to h5, bishop e3, knight e5. So we took back the pawn that we sacrificed on e5, bishop b5 check, knight c6, knight e2, and, and it's time to kick out the bishop from b5, that would be playing just a6. So in this position, if just white takes bishop c6, we will take b takes c6, two pair of bishops, two active bishops, open position, and simply will crush the king set, and black is very pleasant to play that position. For the reason, white tries to save his bishop, and again, black will not stop putting the pressure to the light squared bishop, and that would be by playing knight e5, bishop c2, and immediately b5, because white, uh, white's queen was attacking our pawn on b7. a4, white tries to break up the pawn. And okay, we will let that. Knight goes c4. a takes b5. We don't care about the pawn. Our goal is to crush uh, the king side of white. f takes e5. And one more time, we are not caring the, about the pawn. Rook a6, rook a6, b takes a6, and castles. So right now, in this position, white is two pawns up. Two pawns up but he's really in a dangerous position. For what reason? So I would say e3 is a really vulnerable pawn. Whenever we want, we can just capture that pawn. And here, white sh white's goal is to make as soon as the development. And lastly here, black will make a very powerful move. It's a queen g5, and after this move, I would say it's a completely losing position for white. Because this kind of very uh, strong threat is coming to e3, so in this position, 
if white tries to defend that e3 pawn, for example, by pushing c4, there's a simple tactic we can do, bishop b to queen d2 and queen g to check, just white is uh, losing his rook. Or it would be the same stuff if knight goes to f1. Bishop e2, king e2, queen g to check, and again we are winning back the, the rook of white. And as we can see, um, very aggressive line we went on a dtx e5 because of since we sacrificed, but in exchange we got a really strong initiative. But now let's take a look, what about if bishop captures on e5? If bishop captures on e5, queen e7, we are putting the pressure from the file on the e and f4 and after that white will black will make a very interesting move knight h5 so the idea behind this move actually is the mainly we want to push f6 but also capturing knight f4 is another possibility that black can do knight e2 it's clear why white played in this position knight e2 he just uh, removed the pinning on the e file we play f6 and right so bishop is trapped on uh, e5 queen captures on d5 but right now white is two pawns up in this position and rook d8 black plate queen e4 oh uh, this the bishop on e5 is trapped and whenever we want we can capture the pawn the bishop but not right now because kind of if we capture in this position immediately first of all we will be very down in development and right we are pissed up but for that piece uh, white has three pawns and at the same time king safety problem would happen for white for the reason here we should uh, first of all make the normal development like g6 bishop c7 is also a possibility since it's a pinnet we can all take really the bishop but rook d7 uh, rook d7 bishop can go to nowhere for the reason black plays d5 rook d7 d takes c6 and here another strong move that black will do capturing on e2 where king captures on e2 Knight f4 check, king f3, knight d3, queen d3, and rook d6. Right now it's completely equal position for both of the stuff, so the idea of black is uh, completely clear, just a bishop g7, castles and f5, putting the pressure on d and e file, and at the same time the king of white just traveling on f3, and uh, white also should worry about the, his king. And again, one more time, black position is pretty easy to play. And lastly, let's take a look at another complicated line that uh, white can play h3. So double attack is right now going on. White black is attacking the bishop on f4 and the white is the bishop on g4. Knight f5 with the tempo and I would say this uh, a little bit tricky move. Why? Because queen really cannot give a check. And that's actually what black wants. Black wants uh, to white to give the check for his king. Because why? If queen a4 check, we will not touch the king, touch the king, but just bishop d7, and we are winning the bishop. And it's the same stuff, queen b5 check, with a tempo we are uh, saving the bishop and attacking the queen at the same time, right now bishop is hanging. For the reason uh, white wants, uh, black wants uh, that white should give the check on b5 or a4, but if your opponent really realize you have the bishop d7 move, he probably will go to queen c2, e takes f4, h takes g4, knight takes g4, so right now uh, black is pawn up, queen e to check, queen e7, we shouldn't worry about the knight since uh, it's pinned on e file, knight h3 and here black will make a very positional sacrifice f3 because anyways we are going to lose that uh, this f4 pawn, but uh, we should give up this pawn in the exchange creating this kind of like a positional weakness for our opponent, double pawns. Knight f6, and after all, in this position, I would say around black is slightly positioned, black side better, castles, uh, rook e1, the safety of the king, and also in this position, knight on a5 is doing pretty well, but I would say the best score would be like uh, maneuvering its uh, king set, and that would be the knight 6, knight e7, and that would be the knight 6, knight e7, and knight g6. Um, some, somehow we should have some. Uh, pieces on the king set in order to defend the king then again I would say the pressure on the queen set would be in this position as well and most of the time in the Karakhan defense we will put the pressure on the queen side but sometimes all the king side is possible but most of the time the, uh, the pressure would be stronger on the queen side and lastly let's describe with your queen b7 move 
again another aggressive uh, very tactical line will go uh, critical moment rook b8 queen 6 check and uh, do not think that you wonder your knight again we have this kind of move bishop goes to d7 after bishop d7 queen a6 e takes f4 so right now in this position white is pawn up but in exchange again i would say one more time two pair of bishops and uh, very strong development for black and in the professional chess most of the time you must uh, try to play for the initiative okay give the one pound two pounds but in exchange gets get a very strong advantage for the two pounds not just a simple blundering sometimes we will do like a sacrifice which is unreasonable sacrifice but this is a sacrifice uh, what we are doing is much more makes sense because in the exchange as you can see we are getting the strong initiative stuff and here white of course tries to defend his uh, b2 pawn by pushing b4 and queen 7 another tricky move by queen 7 again we are creating a little bit small trap for our opponent and in this position the right move would be queen a3 but why not knight f3 what do you think let's check our calculation uh, one more time in this position why knight f3 stands for a mistake in this position let's pause the video and try to find I guess uh, you found the answer, it was not like complicated, had some not so easy, just uh, intermediate move and that would be capturing on b4. Because the idea behind this move, queen c1 check and white loses the knight, white, white loses the rook. That's the idea, for the reason instead of knight f3, queen should go to a3, which is uh, in this position bishop b4 is possibility, but after c takes b4 we cannot go to c1. That square is controlled by queen a3. But here we have another cool idea that uh, black can do, maneuvering the rook to e file. Rook b6, knight f3, rook e6 check, knight e5, and boom, f3. Crushing. Uh, we, want to, we want to create the weakness of the white's king side, castles, f takes g2. If uh, white takes king on g2, it's kind of, I would say, he opens g file and the pressure would be even stronger. What are in rook e1? It's kind of, I would say, <laughs> this pawn uh, looks like, no, of course, uh, the black pawn on g2, but this pawn is uh, at the same time stopping the some threats of black. What are reason white didn't capture, but here, knight g4 will go on and knight capturing is not really possible since it's been so how could be the continuation in this position how white continue for example in this position uh white can play after knight g4 like uh even f4 is not possibility in this position just we have simple f6 since the pinning stuff let's say knight goes to the e knight d2 knight e5 d takes e5 so Rook e5 is uh, really pretty early for this kind of moves because king would be in a trouble. Our goal is to make as soon as development, bishop e7, knight f3, and then just castles. And right now still, I would say the position is really tactical stuff, not like positional chess is not at all in this position, I would say. Very aggressive lines, a ton of calculation we should calculate. But right, um, it's much more... Weaker, so the white king set is much more weaker than the blacks, and that's it's clear we are seeing that. And in this position, I would say black's goal would be to crush the white's king set. That would be how we should put the rook on h6, the bishop on g4, and then even there's f6 move would be in order to open up this diagonal. And for white, again, I would say defending is not so easy. and Black is a simple, clear idea, but for white, it's kind of looks like white should find the way how to defend and black should find the way how to win this game. That would be the stuff. And as you can see in the exchange variation, once we played bishop g4, if queen goes to b3, actually we could here play simple queen 7, but since e5 is giving our, our big advantage, why not, right? Playing e5. Queen 7 is possible, but e5 is even much more better. And as you can see, after e5, any of the continuation of black just uh, pl uh, just better for black. And every line, I would say, will go to tactical stuff, not positional chess at all. 
This would be the stuff how we should play in the exchange variation in the car con and I would say if white not goes to this kind of queen b3 line, simple, now right now you have the understanding what kind of structure to put. Two knights on c6 and f6, bishop would be f5 or g4 and then pushing e6 that moment and uh, pushing e6 that moment and then developing the dark square bishop whether it would be to whether it would be on d6 or e7 and then just cast him. Then, then there is a rook c8, also the possibility, simple uh, once you put the structure and then you can continue creating your own ideas to put the pressure on the whether it would be on the queen side. Most of the time we are putting the pressure on the queen side but also the pressure would be also we can go to knight e4 or just a6 b5 would be another idea. Simple, we understand what kind of structure to put in the exchange variation. There are to do all of my recommendations in the exchange variation. So at this moment, we will discuss with you in the next videos how we should play against c4, which would be the pan of variation. Thank you, all, uh, thank you all, guys. I will see you then in my next videos. Thanks. May I have your attention please, because in this video we are going to talk about one of the important lines that you should be aware of once you start to play the Karakon defense, so it would be the pan of variation that happens after the captures on d5. e takes d5, c takes d5, so there is a exchange variation would happen if white goes to bishop d3, but the pan of variation would be playing c4 in this position. After c4, knight f6, knight c3 and knight c6. Once we played knight c6, there is a possibility that white can play knight f3, c takes d5 or pushing c5. And also there is uh, one of the sharp variation that uh, white can go, that would be bishop g5. This move would be described in our next video. In this video, we will take a look with you how we, how we should play against these three moves. Knight f3 and c takes d5 and pushing c5. Let's gonna start with seeing how we should play against c takes d5. c takes d5, knight takes d5, bishop c4, bishop e6. So bishop e6, uh, we are threatening this kind of knight c3 move for the reason white plays bishop b3, g6, knight f3, bishop g7. Uh, we fianchetto, we, uh, we developed our bishop from g7 because of what? First of all, uh, there was no way it developed from uh, here since the blo uh, bishop was blocking our uh, since the bishop was um, blocking the development from the e file and at the same time bishop b g7 is very beneficial development because we are putting even much more strong pr pressure to one of the weakness of our opponent so isolate pawn castles and castles and after all it's clear what uh, black can do just we should uh, play queen d7 and centralizing two rooks on c and d file and starting to put the pressure to d4 pawn and um, black is totally fine at this moment what about if not take c d5 but place c5 white tries to close up the position and at this moment black will start to play very aggressively with the move e5 immediately crashing at the sixth move uh, but really already a little bit critical moment once you played e5 d takes e5 is a very natural move that white can play also there is possibility bishop b5 that white can do but let's take a look how we should play against d takes e5 and in this position most of us will think we should capture uh, the e5 form with our c6 knight but instead of that, one of the strongest Germans, uh, German Grandmaster Daniel Friedman played in this position knight d4. I would say even this is much more stronger rather than capturing on e5. So the idea behind this move would be uh, we are maneuvered our knight to e5, which centralized, even better than the f6. Queen captures d5, bishop e6, queen d8 check, rook d8. So yeah, in this position black is pawned down, but once if you capture the bishop c5, Black is absolutely excellent position, but yeah, white tries to play to play it for that pawn. It, it tries to defend, and in this position, knight will go to b4 and threatening knight to check, even knight d3 check, 
Uh, I would say in this position for just one pawn, black has a very strong initiative uh, as well as the faster development than the white. Bishop e5 check and king e7. Very interesting, but at the same time scary. But I would say we shouldn't afraid from playing king e7 in this position, because the queen's already traded, so no worries about somehow some kind of counter attacks. Uh, white also plays king e2, like not letting the knight to go to d3, a6, uh, f4. Uh, it's the only move, otherwise there's uh, if bishop goes to c4 there's a check and the counterattack is really strong would be it's the king. For the reason f4 is the only move that white can do, a takes b5, f takes e5, bishop c4 check with the tempo and trying to defend that b5 pawn, king f2 and knight c2. Uh, white, white will regain the pawn after knight e3 and then we will take back the c5 pawn. And I would say playing this position with two bishops will be really wonderful. And as we know in chess, like a two pair of bishops always gives us advantage, but in this kind of position, even much more advantages. It, it's much more better because of its close, its open position. Now let's see after e5, what if uh, white plays bishop b5? Uh, so the idea behind this move would be uh, white has this kind of idea. Capturing on queen d4 since the bishop is spinning the knight. But here, just black, uh, black will continue bishop e7, knight f3, castles. And at this point, uh, white should capture bishop c6, that a little bit gives normal position for white. Otherwise, if he touches his, king, uh, his queen, for example, queen d1, there is just we can capture the free pawn, or even we have the better move than the bishop c5, just pushing pawn uh, forward, d4. Knight e2, and bishop a5 check. White is simply losing his bishop, and black is totally winning. For the reason here, um, kind of the move, uh, white has only the one move, that will be capturing bishop c6, b takes c6, castles. So at this moment we removed our isolated pawn on d5, which right now c6 pawn is defending. And at the same time, there is a weakness of white, that would be the c5 pawn. And now it's time to put the pressure to that weakness by playing knight d7 in this position. So sorry about that, so castles and knight goes to d7, putting the pressure to c5 pawn. b4 tries to defend and a5. Whenever you will see this kind of structure, the pawn on c5 and b4, you must always try to break up by pushing a5. Or it could be, let's say you are playing with the white, your open pawn c4 and b5, it should be crushed by playing a4. Kind of the similar stuff. So in this position, a3 uh, will not give anything for white, just we are capturing a takes b4, so capturing is not possible since the rook is spinned. If queen b4 takes, we will just take knight c5, but instead of uh, queen b4, instead of here a3, if you place b takes a5, bishop, ta bishop goes to f6, and after bishop f6, and then queen d2, after queen d2 there is just queen a5 captures, and right now we are taking up, taking that the pawn with that tempo, attacking on c3 knight. After that bishop b2 and knight c5. This is completely very pleasant position for black to play because of what? Two pair of bishops, extra pawn, an open position, a ton of threats that black can do even rook b8 and there's a sacrifice even we can do b2 on a b2 since this bishop is just attacking the very good advantage of that a and h8 h8 and a1 di uh, a1 diagonal so as we can see if white tries to close up the position by playing c5 it could be faced very aggressive move by e5 but now let's take a look what if knight goes uh, simple on f3 uh, we will play in this position bishop g4 and once you play bishop g4 there's uh, two possibilities of white capturing on d5 or just playing simple bishop e2 so bishop e2 happened in the game of Mort and Jassim in Abu Dhabi 1995 where black continued in this position by playing e6, castles, bishop e7, bishop e3, d takes c4, bishop c4, and as you can see right, what we created? The isolated pawn. Black castles, bishop e2, and rook c8. So right now, again, I would say in this position, the black fox would be on the isolated pawn and that uh, pressure to the d4 pawn could be uh, 
by playing queen a5 and rook f8 and then uh, here we will pin the queen that uh, we have bishop f3 idea or even e5 idea is also another possibility we can do after bishop g4 what if white captures c takes d5 knight captures d5 and in this position again white has two possibilities that he can play playing bishop e2 or uh, or here even much more interesting move that white can do queen goes to b3 we're double attacking on d5 and b7 i would say this line would be much more aggressive line uh, where a lot of tactics could happen but simple positional move could be bishop e2 if again bishop e2 e6 castles bishop goes to b4 queen b3 bishop f3 bishop f3 and the reason why we capture bishop f3 in order to uh, take the d4 pawn knight d4 queen a4 check and here's the key move boom b5 okay we shouldn't play just for a pawn because if we touch the king that's totally bad uh, we should give back the pawn but at the end we're getting even much more uh, perfect position because we don't need that pawn we need the crushing the king side so right now as you can see the white has really serious problem that would be the king side problem where even there is uh, no peace in, in this box, I would say, uh, for white, defending that is really problematic. And white, uh, black is just simply going queen h4, a6, once he killed knight, bishop d6, where defending that is not so simple. And I would say black is, we can just give the analysis stuff, black is winning at this moment. What if immediately goes queen b3? Very critical moment, and right now we can understand in the panforation if queen goes to b3, Bishop should capture immediately to f3. Because that's the idea behind this move. Uh, we have the knight d4 move where we can capture. But of course not here in this position knight d4 because uh, after knight d4 there's a knight, our knight on d5 hanging. At the same time, instead of um, that, just white has bishop b5 check. Knight b5, queen b5, and after all, we are just losing our knight. That would be the stuff. For the reason, knight d4 in this position is a mistake. Before taking knight d4, we should defend our knight d5, queen b7, and now it's time uh, to take that d4 pawn. Bishop b5 check still is a possibility. Knight b5. And once uh, black captures knight b5, uh, here white has two continuations. I would say queen b5 check is a very natural move. Instead of that, there's also queen d6 interesting move, which would be the main line. But if queen b5, there's a queen d7, queen d7, queen d7, king d7, knight d5, e takes d5. Around equal position, but black is better because of the pawn structure of white. And uh, the centralization of the king as well. But in this position, white can has even much more stronger move, queen c6 check. So the idea behind this move, we cannot really block with a queen. Otherwise, the rook on a8 is hanging. King goes to e7, queen b5, queen d7. Uh, we are trying to trade off the queens. That should be the idea. Knight d5, queen d5. Queen d5, e takes d5. This is the main line that uh, happens in the power operation. Uh, happens a lot in uh, professional chess. Castles and king e6 is one of the strongest moves. Yeah, king e6. Uh, kind of, it looks like king is going to travel, but that's a strong move. We shouldn't afraid uh, from a little bit centralization of our king because of there is no threats at all. If there's, a, yeah, if there was some minor pieces, maybe it was dangerous, but right now only two rooks bishop against rooks bishop. Rook e1 check, and the ideal score for the king would be to f5. Yeah. King f5 because kind of a little bit uh, we can look to this position as, as a minor piece end game and in the end game stuff we know centralization the king is really really important bishop e3 bishop e7 rook a2 1 so it could be continued by rook f8 rook c8 rook c8 bishop a7 um, white just captures the pawn bishop f6 attacking to the to this b2 pawn so rook should play rook d1 otherwise if b3 just rook a8 and we are capturing rook a2 and black can start to play for a win since we have a active pass pawn rather than the white's passive pass pawn rook d1 king e6 just we are defending bishop d4 bishop d4 rook d4 so in this position i would say yeah white is pawn up but this a double pawn can be counted at the one pawn 
So king e5, at the same time we have a idea that we can push past pawn. Rook d2, rook c1 check, king g2 and g5. Uh, black is slightly in this position because of uh, the placement of the pieces. In this position, white is defending very passively and the black is attacking actively. And how uh, it could be continued? If touching one of the pawns will not give anything for white, uh, both of the sides just should stay. If they will stay, for example, let's see how the position can continue. For example, if what if pawn goes to b4? Rook goes to b1, a3, just rook b3, that's a possibility, or we can just uh, push d4 pawn. We can just push d4 pawn and let's say rook stays on d3. We will just go king d5 and our path pawn is much more faster than rather than white, even it's a winning step. I would say if white stays simple, for example, check, king f5, rook d2, rook king, king e5, around equal position. But that could uh, that will happen if both of the sides will play the main line stuff. But I would say still, it's much more um, pleasant position to play with the black since we are attacking, not just defending. So this would be the stuff how you should play in the panoration like uh, against knight of 3, c5 and c5. And in the next video, we are going to talk with you one of the aggressive moves of white immediately bishop playing g5. And I would say it's a little bit looks like the structure of the queen's gambit. That was all my recommendation that how you should play in the pan operation and we will discuss with you in the next video bishop g5 move, so see you soon! Now we are going to take a look with you another line that white could play in a pan operation, bishop g5 on the move 6. I would say this bishop g5 move is much more like a sharp variation could happen in design because of uh, many like a tactical situations could happen. So bishop g5, after bishop g5, uh, black captures the deck c4 and at this moment as you can see white has a bunch of options that he could play. So it would be simple knight f3 or aggressively pushing d5 at the beginning of the game or just bishop c4. Let's gonna take a look first knight f3 where h6 will be played and bishop captures on f6. Instead of bishop f6, if bishop goes to h4, there's a move g5 immediately, bishop g3 and bishop e6. And in this position for white, it's not uh, so easy to regain the pawn. Uh, so black simply continues bishop g7 and castles with this uh, extra pawn. But if bishop f6, we capture e takes f6, so right double pawn, but we have uh, two pair of bishops. Bishop c4, and then bishop d6 in this position, and after that um, castles, castles as well, h3, bishop f5. Right now we have two pair of bishops, which is really good, and white tries to, defend, tries to trade one of our bishops, and... It's no problem if you trade that because this bishop was all active at the same time this one. Uh, bishop f5, queen f5, that trending even helps us to put our queen even to a better place, to much more active. Queen b3, so attacking on b7, knight a5, queen a4, rook fc5. So here around equal position for both of the side. And I would say, right, this is a double pawn, but it's not like a real problem. So at the same time, white has like a d4 pawn that he should try to defend uh, at the end of the game, until the end of the game. So here, all of the pieces, I would say black working instead of just only rook a8. Just it could be also added in the game by a6, b5, attacking the queen. Yeah, of course, first knight c4 replaced, then a6, b5, crushing the queen side. If, let's say, I would say d5 is, I would say, much more aggressive move that white can do, in the early of the game, and we should be a little bit, um, we should play a little bit in this position, simple, which means safe move should be played, queen d4, and in this position here, one of the strong moves that black should play, h6. So the idea behind this move with queen e5, just uh, h6, g5 is coming, so here are two possibilities that white can continue this position.
by playing uh, bishop f4. So we just um, remove the king from the, remove the bishop from the attack or queen e5. Let's go and take a look first. What if white tries to save his bishop? Bishop f4, knight goes to g6, bishop c4, knight f4, queen f4, and this like a d5 pawn I would say stops the development of black. For the reason, black should find another way that he can make a development and g5 even with the tempo, queen d2. Bishop g7, knight g2, bishop d7, bishop b3, b5, castles, queen b6, rook c1, castles, and knight d4, rook fd8. Right now, black has a pleasant position. Yeah, this this is the isolate pawn, but I would say this could be the white's advantage at the same time disadvantage because white should try to save this pawn. I would say white should continue to defend that pawn. Otherwise, if he makes one mistake, just if a pawn can be captured, for example, bishop e8, and right in this position we have two pair of bishops. The next continuation could be by a5, a4, kicking out the bishop from b3, that defending the d5 pawn. And after h6, queen e5, another interesting line that white can go. h takes g5, bishop c4. So right now, nobody is uh, pawn up or pawn down. Bishop d7, knight f3, queen b6, immediately improving the queen and attacking the threat queen b2. Uh, white castles, so in this position, it doesn't make any sense. Rook f1, just rook fp8 and b7. Black will face counter attack and it's a losing position. G4 is a strong move, kicking out the knight, knight d4, and here another very interesting move, white will do rook h5, queen f4, e5. So right here in this position, black is not casting, but still we are going to very aggressive, aggressively, because our goal right now is much more um, attention to crush the king side of white. D takes e6, bishop d6, e takes d7 check, right, so white just sacrifice the pawn at the same time as the bishop, king f8, remove, if you take king d7, there's some even counter attack black can face for the reason, we should try to play simple, king f8, knight a4, and in this position, queen cannot be touched, otherwise there's a very strong attack from h2 could happen, for example, queen is forced to go to, to put only dark squares, if only dark squares, it would, for example, queen d2, Bishop h to check, bishop f4, at the end just white is losing his queen. For the reason knight a4 is uh, the possibility, queen c7 is a strong move. Here are a lot of calculation, but the best move to do for black is playing queen 7 knight b5, bishop f4, knight 7 bishop h to check, king h1, bishop c7 check, king g1, and the last move b5. With the forcing moves, just black out the winning position. And I would say that was really, really cool. That was really a strong attack by black happened in this position. I would say black got the winning position even without casting because uh, we put so strong pressure on the king side of white. And lastly, once we capture after d takes c4, so we discussed uh, knight f3 and another uh, aggressive version d5. What if just bishop c4, simple way h6 kicking out the bishop so there's a bishop h4 possibility bishop e3 as well if bishop f6 we already this kind of line where e takes e5 you e takes f6 you will put kind of the similar structure as that if bishop e3 so white tries to defend that d4 pawn e6 bishop and um, knight, uh, knight f3 bishop e7 castles castles Rook c1, right, when you play e6, you can think, oh, how we can develop the light square bishop in this position, right? It could be uh, then stay passive, passively. But here, the dark light square bishop of black would be developed by fiancatering on the queen side. b6, a3, bishop b7, queen e2, and bishop d6. But the next idea, first of all, maneuvering the knight to f5, that would be very good maneuvering, at the same time, opening up this light square bishop on b7. And uh, I would say it's the structure is a little, little bit looks like like a call system Zucker or structure that I usually white puts with the white, and it's also possible to put the black as you can see in this position. 
But after h6, uh, so we understand bishop e3 is kind of the idea behind this move to uh, trying to defend d4 pawn. There's also bishop h4 possibility that white will give up the pawn, but that in exchange will give will get the strong initiative. e5, knight f3, knight f3, bishop f6, g takes f6, bishop b5 check, but the forcing moves are going on. King e7, knight d5 check, king d8, g takes f3, and bishop d6. So right now we are following the game between Aronian and Stelwagen that happened in the wake and Z. And I would say with the black piece, uh, the, it's a young uh, Dutch grandmaster. It is defending really well. And white really cannot use the file uh, for much. And for example, if uh, the knight moves somewhere it will give the great score for the king whether to e7 c7 or e7 so this position continued by playing rook d2 bishop went to e6 rook hd1 just uh, white double up his rook on the d file bishop c5 and right here black gave the material advantage knight b6 check king e7 knight e8 rook e8 in this position, we have the bishop and pawn uh, for the rook, but I would say this uh, the value of the bishop is uh, much more better than having rook in this position. And bishop d7, bishop a2, bishop g4, bishop d4. Right now we have even like a bishop two pawn for the rook. And at this moment, the draw was agreed between Aronian and Stilwagen in the 2009. And as you can see, even this kind of like a strong grandmasters, if black plays uh, this kind of right moves, I would say here um, black did very positional sacrifice. And that doesn't, that even white was material up, but it does, uh, nothing gives for white at that moment. So as you can see, after bishop g5, d takes c4 would be the move that we should do. And after all, there are three possibilities that uh, could happen and we discussed. Uh, I hope you guys, uh, you understand that now how you should play against the pan operation. I would say you will face this opening, uh, maybe quite often, but not. But anyways, uh, you should know this kind of lines that your opponent can play. Thank you all. This was Fidel Master Dalar Vahidev for the Karakan course. Thank you. Now it's time. Let's take a look with you one of the sidelines of the Karakon defense. Right now people are quite doing a lot. Would be the pseudo pawn operation. Yeah, the name itself is saying that it could be similar to some variations of the pan up, since we understand the real pan up would be in the main line d4, d5, takes, takes, and c4. That actually what we call the pan operation. And since after white push c4, some of the structures would be similar to the pan operation. That's why we call this one the pseudo pan operation. And as you can see here, white is playing the c4 without pushing d4. So once uh, white push c4, we will continue our usual plan, pushing pawn to the center, d5, takes, takes, takes. And I would say here would be the key point that you should pay attention. In this position, the correct move would be developing the knight to f6 and the whole point of that would be if we take in this position the pawn with the queen d5 first of all it could be like a similar to the scandinavian structure because in the scandinavian it would be kind of the same moves and once with the queen d5 there's knight c3 move would be in the scandinavian and it's also possible to do here right now so the stuff would be if you take with the queen d5 you will kind of lose some like one to tempos and as well as black and white can get much more ahead in a development. That's why queen d5 would be not uh, recommended at this position to take with the queen. But actually, playing knight f6 would be much more stronger because we will take that with our knight. We will not lose an extra tempo for that. And at the same time, uh, taking the knight, uh, the d5 pawn is much, much more better. So once we played knight f6, the main line would be in this position that white should go knight c3. And we will see this move with you in our next video. Uh, but in this video, I'm going to take a look with you 
some of the quite interesting continuations of the white besides knight c3 at this point. So it could be queen a4 check or also bishop b5 check seems interesting. Let's take a look first bishop b5 check how we should continue. If white plays bishop b5 check the knight should go to bd7, knight goes c3 and we play a6. And once he here we play a6, back like a 10, 20 years ago, uh, people quite played a lot at this moment, like a queen a4 move, because that seems really good. It's the reason why queen a4, first of all, as you can see, we cannot take our open bishop since our rook on a8 got pinned, as well as white is developing at the same time his queen. But actually, in the modern chess world, right now, as you, as you know, like a new agent's released, black after analyzing some of the lines it showed that black gets much more like a better advantage after queen a4 so we do with the rook b8 bishop takes d7 check bishop, queen takes d7 queen takes d7 and bishop d7 moving to the favorable endgame part but sure we are pawned on but this is like a hanging pawn whenever you want we can just take it by playing bishop f5 and then putting the rook to d8 White pushed d4, bishop f5, bishop g5, and knight goes d4, trying to offer to trade the knight. And the reason why the knight before the main idea behind this would be just we want that the white capture our knight. If captures, as you can see in this position, we will have a double attack to white pawns. That's what we really want, but actually, right, so white realize our pawn, uh, they will play bishop f4. Rook d8, and again the whole idea would be knight c3, p c3, and then capturing that the pawn on d5. Simply, rook d8 we played in order to remove the defender of c3. Knight goes to g2 in order to, to support his knight, and we will go knight of 6 to put the pressure on the d5 pawn. And at this moment, uh, white has two continuations he can do. Uh, it could it could be long casting or short casting. Let's take a look for short castle if uh, like white short castle we'll just take knight d5 knight d5 rook d5 rook fc1 since uh, this is one like a clearly open file that white can put the pressure immediately so here we shouldn't worry about uh, about the rook c8 check since that square is being controlled by our bishop all we need to uh, would be to do the to develop the this bishop to a correct place and that would be quite with the interesting pawn f6 Rook c7, g5, bishop g3, and rook d7. And this game was played in 1995 in Budapest, where against Svobodva played Upper Jesse, and Upper Jesse got quite good advantage at this point, and after like a 20-25 moves, black uh, won this position because of good advantage. At the same time, after knight f6, as I said, besides short casting, there's also white can choose long casting. But here, the idea will not change. It would be quite the same. Knight takes, knight takes, rook takes, knight c3, and putting the rook to d7. Why not to d8? Because like in the future, when we want to put the pressure there on d4, it kind of creates the space for our the rook on f8, in order to double up the rooks on a d file. White plays d5, and the idea of d5 is just white is trying to remove his isolate pawn. And after that, here black surprises his opponent by playing g5. And right, it's very uh, tactical move at this point, the g5. So again, here white can choose two options, taking that or not taking. If takes bishop g5, rook g8, h4, f6, bishop e3, rook g2. With the big advantage for black would be at this moment and if bishop e3 just ignores the pawn we will push g4 the g4 is like uh, blockading some of the uh, white's pawns uh, ideas rook hg1 bishop g7 bishop d4 f6 and at this point f6 could seem a little passive and the reason why we played f6 is just not to trade off the dark squared bishops to keep the pair of bishops and the whole idea would be king f7, rook c8, and now once we uh, maneuver the rook to c8, now we can just uh, add this, uh, add the game with our bishop by going bishop g8 and then pushing f5. That could be the possibility. Or even another possibility could be with the bishop f8, e6, 
and again we are getting the really favorable endgame. Here I would say Black has quite many ideas he can do. First of all, these ideas uh, could be possibility or another much more favorable idea for Black seems like h5, bishop h6. Like uh, putting the bishop on here, on the king side, but actually the two bishops will control the white's queen side. So this queen a4, as I'm saying, quite played 20 like years ago, but in the modern chess right now, most people are just going back to bishop e2 and letting the black to push b5. And after b5, d4, and the white pushed b4. And as you can see that bishop e2 is helping for black uh, to do the idea of b5 and b4 at this moment. Knight a4, knight d5, knight f3, e6, so all the black need to do in this position would be to make the correct development. Castles, bishop b7, bishop g5, bishop b7, bishop e7, queen e7, and then rook c1 and just castles. And um, after the opening, as you can see, black got the favorable middle game part. As you can see, white has a main, the weakness d4, the blockaded pawn, and black has really strong knight in the center d5 as well as now this knight is going to knight f6 knight e4 and we can put the rook on d file simply favorable middle game part and the main pressure that black can put uh, would be the isolate pawn of white or just here black can simply trade off everything and moving to the end game part since white has a isolated pawn and also on the move five after knight f6, so we now look to queen a4 check, uh, sorry, bishop b5 check. And now let's take a look what about if queen goes immediately to a4 check. This time again, we will respond to knight b7, and now white plays knight c3. If bishop goes to b5, it will kind of transpose the variation that we saw a little time ago. Knight c3, g6, so right, uh, we should make a development. And it's not really possible to make with the e file since the d5 pawn is just stopping. That's why we are fianketing the bishop. Knight f3, bishop g7, bishop c4, a6. So the whole idea behind this would be like, for example, in the future, we can put b5. Sure, it would be still not fork since it will, uh, it would be still not the fork stuff, but still. Uh, we could have this kind of ideas. Who knows, maybe after rook b8, if our open is something, we can just push and fork it. d3, castles, and here, finally, white played queen a3, but not castles, because here, b5 works. And now let's take a look, let's uh, do some like a tactical stuff. I would just recommend you to pause the video for like a 30, 40 seconds in order just to calculate what do you think, whether this b5 move works or not. So if you still spend the time, uh, I would say probably found the, the uh, answer, b5 works, because once bishop takes b5, now we have knight b6 move. That's the key move. Because the knight b6, we are attacking the queen, defending the rook, which is the rook is not anymore pinned since being defined by the knight and then we are just taking the bishop getting the extra piece that's why first white escaped to a3 after b6 and now castled uh, by just removing b5 and in this position still now b5 is not possible because just bishop takes and the rook still pinned and there wouldn't be knight b6 move bishop b7 rook e1 and rook e8 and after that, white goes to knight g5, uh, the sharp main line. And more positions, like moves, in the practice, people not play it a lot. So if, uh, most of the time, people just made this kind of uh, tactical variations by knight g5. Rook c8, d6. So the d6, as you can see right now, black uh, white is white playing d6. It's like you cannot really take the pawn on a d6 since your f7 pawn is hanging because white is putting the pressure by two pieces, bishop and the knight. That's why all you need to be just closing up the position by pushing e6, stopping much more ideas of white. Bishop f4, b5. And after b5 here, by understanding what kind of chess player you are playing, he can just play simply bishop b3 
or he can go to much more critical variation. So the critical variation would be sacrificing the bishop uh, on e6 for the pawn, f takes e6, knight takes e6, queen b6. A little bit it seems black king said got a, a little bit weaker, but actually it's not, queen b3. So right now white is putting the future pin ideas, that's why we're uh, removing the king from the pin. Knight takes g7, king, uh, king takes g7, rook e7 check, rook e7 d takes e7, knight c5, queen d1, and rook e8, with a winning position uh, Radovanovich got in the Colston 2007 against Snape. So yeah, right, in this moment white has a three pawns for the piece, but actually this e7 pawn is really vulnerable, and we are just going to take that in a few moves. For example, after queen b2 we can just go in the king f7 and capture on a rook e7, that pawn, or it can be captured by putting the pressure with the queen. And once we capture that, then d3 also at the time is isolate. Also, white will lose his pawn and quite a winning position. And as we can see, at this moment, this kind of uh, sacrificing will not for will not work for white. That's why bishop b3 should be played. And after bishop b3, knight c5, rook a d1, and knight h5. Again, the important move because after knight h5, we are adding the knight even to the game because it's doing something as well as opening up our dark squared, dark squared fianchetto bishop. Bishop b3, knight b3, a takes b3. And I guess you realized why not to the queen, but why with the pawn, because otherwise if captured the queen, we are just taking that the free pawn on d6. That's why white is choosing the double pawn structure, but right, still defending this d6 f5, knight h3, because the reason why we played f5, we could uh, have this kind of idea. White will realize that that's why it goes knight h3. And now it's a point to focus on another weakness of white to d6 pawn. And white tries to defend by bishop c5. So here, black should make uh, the right sacrifice and stuff. We can call it as a, like a positional sacrifice since Positionally, at this moment, having uh, two bishop, I mean, having the bishop and, and the pawn for the rook is better for black since the two bishops are d doing really well. And the continuation could be like that, queen c7, queen c3, putting the pressure on the king side of white. So yeah, this game actually happened uh, in 2009 in Ostrava against Soko played Laz uh, Lazinka. And Lazinka had very fine game after this moment where, where right now uh, black has the bishop for the rook and as well as the pawn. So for, for uh, right now black has a bishop and the pawn for just against the rook and right now as you can see even we still trade off the queens, that two bishops are strong since the position is open. So this would be how we should play against the uh, pawn of if on the move five, your open can play like bishop b5 check or queen a4 check. Just put, uh, as you can see in the episode pawn of we are developing the knight from bd7 since d5 uh, pawn is not letting us develop from knight six. I would say this kind of general thing you should keep in mind that in the episode upon of just keep in mind uh, usually you can develop the, your knight from bd7 since the d5 pawn will not let you develop from c6. So this video was all about queen a4 check like a bishop b5 check and our next video we will talk about with you and uh, the main move that uh, in the episode upon of can be played it would be knight c3. Thank you all. This was Film Master Dale Vahidov for the Car Concourse. See you in the next video. And here we are again with you in our new video where we'll take a look how we should continue on the move 5 that Knight goes to 3 instead of the pen of variation. So in the previous video we take a look with you how we should play against on the move 5 queen goes to a4 check and bishop b5 check 
And now it's a take a look to much more like a professional move or normal like a logical move white can do quite a lot, but just playing knight c3. Knight after gold c3, knight takes d5, knight takes uh, the knight f3, knight c6. And if you pay attention that in our previous video I mentioned that when if knight goes not c3 but goes queen a4 check bishop b5, where we developed our b8 knight? It was from bd7, not knight c6. And but at this moment, if knight goes from c3 without bishop b5 check, queen a4 check, as you can see, we are developing our knight from c6. And that's a difference right now you can see between the sidelines of pseudo pawn operation and the main line. So after knight c6, here again, uh, white can choose quite many uh, options. But the two normal moves that people quite did, did a lot would be bishop c4 and bishop b5. If bishop goes b5, let's take a look for bishop b5, how we should play. We will uh, play e6, white castles, bishop e7, d4, castling, rook e1, bishop d7, and bishop d3. So white is developing his pieces, black is also developing pieces. And right now, as you can see, it's a little bit black pieces, uh, all of them set in the center. That's why we need some support for the king side. That's why knight f6 is a very uh, important move. And at the same time, it's kind of removing white's greed gift sacrifice that could happen to bishop h7 check. It's kind of removing that idea at the same time. And after knight f6, white plays a3, rook c8, bishop c2. So the idea of bishop d3 is to put the queen on d3, putting again the pressure to h7 square, queen a5, bishop g5, and rook f8. Queen goes to f3. And we are again in the very important uh, positions, in the important position. And right now, once white played d3, it shows his plan is quite clear. He wants to come take, take, and from h7, he wants to uh, create some checkmate patterns. That's why in this position, g6 is, is the correct move, removing most of the ideas of white, but still, uh, white will, can continue to put the pressure on the king side of black and after h4 bishop goes to e8 in order uh, to support these light squared pawns and after that rook goes to a1 and here in this position as you can see that white is right now putting the pressure on the king side and black is black will use the technique of the best defense is counterattack. since white is focusing on the king side and we understand in the karakon defense we will most of the time focus on the queen side. And now it's a time for black to put the pressure on the queen side of white. Queen goes to b6, bishop b1. So when white played bishop b1, he thought that queen b2 is not a possibility since the queen get trapped, but actually uh, he missed black's another move. It would be queen a1, bishop c2, and after queen a2, in this position, if, okay, rook a1, just queen d5 is coming, so we won the pawn and we saved our queen, it's a winning stuff. But here, uh, white could have bishop f6, bishop f6, bishop b3, where only the move that black can do would be just capturing the pawn, and rook e6. When white played in this position, uh, sacrificed the pawn, there was this kind of idea of white sacrificing stuff. Bishop f6, bishop f6, all of them are just uh, forcing moves. That's why white was able to calculate that, rook e6. But what white missed was he looked up his opponent's weak options, which means taking the rook on e6. For sure, if we take the rook on e6, white is taking back and winning our queen. But here the strong of just black hand would be king g7. And after that kind of... Uh, white would be right now in this position in the Zugzuwang stuff because any move, if white do, for example, goes there, his just uh, piece are hanging, and that's why rook f6 seems normal. We can take with the king f6, but the normal continuation would be just playing in this position knight a5. Because if we take in this position king f6, white could, uh, could play in this position like a queen e3 move. And putting the pressure to our uh, to our 
king side. But just playing knight a5, you're just getting the winning position and for example, rook probably goes to f4 and after rook f4, now we can simply uh, take that bishop with our queen. First of all, right now in this position, we, we should just simplify since we got the winning position. We are just pawn up as well as when this knight is hanging and we will take the pawns. And as you can see, we have the B and A, the past pawns that we can promote. So this was uh, if bishop goes to b5, where we uh, saw that we made the development of the e6, but not fiancating the bishop. But there's also bishop c4 variation, putting the pressure on the knight on d5. And knight b6, bishop b3, bishop f5 is a key move. Why it's a key move? Because again, if you, yeah, here we should make the development of black, but if you did that with e6, Yes, you're developing a dark square bishop, but what about your light? Light square, your light square bishop until the end of the game then can get the uh, passive. That's why first bishop f5 and then e6. And as you can see, again, we are doing the e6 because usually, usually in the Karakon defense, you will put like e6, c6 structure. So since we trade off c pawns, we are playing with the e6 and not with the fianca doing stuff. Castles, bishop e7, h3, normal castles. White is playing normally, black is playing normally. They're both of them playing by plan. So bishop e3. And yeah, one more thing that you should know, when your open will play with your pseudo pano variation, where in the second move he push c4, you, uh, most of the time white will get the isolate pawn. And that's why I'll say you should be also aware of some, how you should play against isolate pawn. So my some tips to do for you when you play against isolate pawn, all you need would be simplify the position, just trade off everything and move to the favorable end game, because in the end game part defending that would be a little bit harder for your opponent since the last piece will left. And the second thing would be you must always take control of the square of the isolate pawn, which means the pieces should be around this isolated pawn. That how is black doing right now? So after bishop e3, uh, black added to the game his rook, rook c8, queen e2, rook c7, very clever idea, very clever rook maneuvering, I would call it. And uh, why it's a clever, black realized d4 is a weakness and putting the pressure by maneuvering the rook. Rook d7, queen d2, tries to defend, queen b8, that's also a clever idea, which now black uh, tries to put the pressure with the, the rooks since it will be much more pressure, uh, much more stronger, as well as black can put then queen to d6 in order to put extra pressure on the d4. Knight a4, knight a4, bishop a4, and just bishop e4, where Morovic Fernandez got pleasurable game. I'll say it's already black's better in this position against Tobolov in Las Palmas, 1993. And the next move quite clear, even you don't need to be like a strong chess player, you know, the uh, make that move, rook f8, and putting the pressure on the isolate pawn. So overall, what can we say about the upset the pawn of variation that we understood? First of all, in the sidelines part of queen a4 check and bishop b5 check, we will develop our knight from bt7, and at that point we have the possibility of fianchetting the bishop since the e file will be blocked by d pawn. But as you can see in the main line of the, in the main line when knight is going to c3, we are doing the normal uh, development of the knight from c6, but not, not, not from the bd7. At the same time, we are not fianchetting our bishop at all, since uh, we have the chance to develop it from e6. With that being said, we also complete with you the another line that could happen in the Karakon, see the Panov. And we only just left one variation that we should see. And after that, the Karakan course could be completed. D3, that we will see in our next video. And I hope still you're enjoying from my course. See you then in my next video. Cheers. We are almost completing our journey with you. And now we are take a look at the last 
the uh, D3 move that White can do, which you will not quite fa quite face a lot in the Corrigan defense. But anyways, let's uh, consider this kind of moves that you're if you're open place, you should be confident how you respond against it. So this second move D3 is actually you will not face quite a lot in the Corrigan defense, and maybe you will not face at all when you will play. But this is a game of the chess. Anybody can play whatever they want. And the point of d3 white white will play d3, we can ask, he will put the structure of Philidor, but actually not with a black perspective, but with a white perspective. That's why uh, white can play like that. And then, so right, usually, uh, as usual, you'll develop the d5, and then you'll also push e5. And once white got the Philidor structure, now let's uh, take a look how we will continue. Bishop will be developed from d6 in order to defend the pawn on e5. And once you play the bishop d6, uh, white can choose two normal options at this point, uh, just fianketing the bishop, or queen can go to e2. Let's take a look why, uh, how we should uh, play against uh, g3, knight f6, ca bishop g2, castles, castles, rook e8, uh, rook e1, and we will also develop our knight from bd7 since c6 square is being our we have, since we have the pawn on c6 square c3 queen c7 having uh, we have the space for the queen that we can put and we are putting that white also creates a space for his queen to c2 and he's putting that a5 the positional move where the idea of a5 like pushing a4 and doing some blockading stuff knight f1 White is uh, putting the knight on the front, and the whole idea of that would be uh, developing the bishop, activating the, his last piece. D takes e4, d takes e4, knight c5. And right now, as you can see, we are putting the pressure on e4 pawn of our opponent. And white is defending that by playing knight h4. At the same time, that knight h4 idea just not only defending, opening up the bishop uh, diagonal at the same time. He could have the possibility of knight f5, that's why here we should do the prophylaxis stuff, just pushing g, uh, g6, removing knight f5 move, and then bishop g5, bishop e7. Around equal position, uh, I can uh, give in this position for black. So then what you can do after bishop e7, bishop e6, you will go on. And here, as you can see, clearly uh, positional chess is happening. But yeah, again, you can see, the placement of the white piece on the king side and the black piece on the queen side. And at the same time, we have just only one open file and all pressure that you will need to put would be on the DCD file since it's the only open file. As well as, so black can have two ideas in this position, bishop e6, a4, a, like a4, and putting the pressure on the queen side of white. Or another idea would be after bishop e6, doubling up the rook on a d file and putting the pressure on the d file of our opponent. And after bishop d6, so we take a look on a g3 move, uh, how we should play if white fianchettos, and it was quite simple, the structure. Queen e2 seems really interesting move since usually we will not uh, see this kind of moves at the beginning of the game, like on just move 5. And white is developing his queen from e2. After that, knight goes to f6. And the, and why I am saying it's quite interesting move? Because white could have this kind of uh, surprising move for black on the move 6, pushing d4. Real, really beautiful position since the 4 pawns in the center that we will not usually see. And here we should know which pawn to capture, the d4 or e4. And the right capturing would be in this position, uh, the d4, since if he captured on the pawn on a d text with the e4, he could have taken that uh, with the d text e4, and we will take, he takes back, and at the end we are losing our bishop pair. That's why the right caption would be e takes d5, and after e takes d5, so white should capture the e takes d5 check. So e5 not makes sense, because tactically we can just trick our opponent. And right now we are peace, uh, we are not pissed up, but if white tries to take our pawn, like a bishop or the knight, he's going to lose his queen at this point. That's why e5 not works, 
Etx d5 check is is much more stronger. Bishop e7, the blocking with the bishop. Knight takes d4, castles, queen f3, bishop g4, queen b3. So right now, uh, simply as you can see, black has much more faster development than the white. And as well as uh, we have some compensation for that pawn. And it seems that from the beginning white did around like a three moves with the queen and quite uh, that's really stopping the white's development as well as it was too slow for white. And then okay, white can be too busy with taking the three pawns, but we shouldn't ignore our pawns since we are attacking the king. All we need would be to crush the king. That's why even after queen d5 we are sacking the rook where white, black, white shouldn't take. Otherwise, if takes our rook on 8, uh, here the really cool tactical stuff could happen. Queen d4. And right now bishop b4 check is coming. There could be bishop e3, bishop e2, bishop e2. And king takes e2. And after king takes e2, simply we could have go to knight g4. And crushing our opponent's skin set. That's why after queen d5, white shouldn't be so greedy even to take the rook. He should try to go knight e2, but then you will go knight b7. Okay, so white is pawn up, but the position is already losing for white. At the moment that white should uh, resign, even he's a pawn up, because simple in a couple of few mo couple uh, moves, black will crush the white's king set. So just know these kind of d3 moves, um, as I said, and again I will say that one more time, you will face, but not a lot. Maybe uh, out of 100 games when you play c6 uh, the Karakhan, you can face maybe like two or three times. And d3 is a move usually who plays? Like uh, normal people that who does know the opening or just they're putting their own structure or they're just playing from their own knowledge. In this course, we learned with you how to play the Karakhan defense with the black perspective. And as we understood, right now Karakhan defense is becoming one of the popular uh, openings for black and people are enjoying a lot from it. That's why uh, it's becoming one of the sole responses against e4. And actually this uh, Karakhan defense uh, been one of the favorite openings of uh, world champions in the history, such as Capablanca, Botwini, Petrosian and Karpov and also uh, getting the girls in our recent popular uh, modern chess, such as uh, strong GMs Anand, Adams and Loco is playing this uh, Karakhan defense with a black perspective. And also in the modern chess uh, world, Karakhan defense has given black like, some great results at very top games in a very recent time. For example, uh, Nakamura managed to beat the Topal of, uh, with the Karakhan as a London chess classic in 2016. And uh, at the same time, right now, this Karakhan, why it's so trendy uh, during our modern chess world, because uh, this opening is continuously uh, develop developing by the, by the Green Masters, by some title players, and as well as since uh, new engines releasing, this, uh, these incredible engines are helping us to find even some good novelties and new approaches. Uh, that's why there is still no easy and clear way for white to get advantage uh, against this uh, opening in the most critical lines such as uh, classical variations, advanced variation or the exchange variation. Overall I could say that the car this Karakon opening is a really good opening for the club chess players and, and for sure you should uh, consider not for yourself, but even for your friend to recommend uh, this playing the Karakhan defense in order, in order to expand their horizons. Because it's a very solid and reliable opening, which at the same time helps you to become a better strategic player. Thank you all. This was my course for the Karakhan defense. And pretty sure I guess I described it everything. And if you have any questions, any recommendations about the curves, just shoot message me here or on other 
chess websites. I will, I will try to respond to you as soon as possible. Thank you all, guys, and I will see you then in my future course.